Hey guys, hope you're doing well. This is Surya from Skilling. Previously, we had a video on how to become a design engineer. And post that video, there were a lot of requests. People were asking us to make a video on how to become a CAA engineer. And today, we are basically taking that request and going in depth on how to becoming a CAA engineer. So if you are someone fresh out of undergrad, or if you are pursuing your third year of your engineering or fourth year of your engineering and want to become a CAE or a FEA engineer, that is a particular mode that you need to follow. If you are already working in the industry with around two to three years of experience in the industry, then there's another pathway that you need to follow. We'll kind of go over both the pathways today and uh, you can pick which pathway works for you. So if you're a fresher, the role that you will be applying for is CAE modeler. This role can have multiple names, but the essence of it will be CAE modeler. So how to become a CAE engineer? Well, before getting into that question, let's explain what is CAE analysis, right? CAE analysis either is called as computer aided engineering analysis, or it's also called as FE analysis, finite element analysis, right? It's essentially structural analysis. In this analysis, in every analysis for that aspect, there is three parts, a pre-processing, solving and post-processing. What does pre-processing mean? Say you have a very complex component like your car. Your car is at a very complex uh, shape and in order to figure out the volume, surface or area, uh, it becomes really tough. So what engineers do is they break the whole bigger complex component into smaller known components like a square or a triangle. So meshing is basically having the complex component split up into multiple triangles or which is also called as elements or nodes, right? That's the process of meshing and that process is called pre-processing. Then there is solver. Solver is where you apply the governing equation for a particular uh, aspect of analysis and solve the problem. And then there is post-processor. Post-processor is where you basically derive results out of the solution in a more pictorial representation. These are the three aspects of a CAE domain. Pre-processing, solving, and post-processing. If you are looking into pre-processing, then one of the aspects that you need to look into is understanding how meshing works, right? Very simply said, that is basically what a CAE modeler will do, right? A CAE modeler, as he enters into an industry, will be working on meshing a complex component, right? Okay, well, once he meshes, what happens? Then he basically connects it to the connecting component. Say, for example, there is a door that you need to mesh. Now you have meshed the door, then one of your colleagues would have meshed the BAW of the car. So now you need to connect the BAW of the car and the door, right? That's what connections is. There are different types of connections. We will not go into depth of that, but I hope you understand what connections are. Once those components are connected, then there is vehicle integration. So vehicle integration is nothing but you have different components meshed and connected. For a car, there are multiple components. So an engineer basically integrates the whole vehicle and sends it to the team which basically solves. Right? So this aspect of meshing connections and vehicle integration and also something called the morphing, which is a little advanced, uh, I'll not go into that. But these three things are what will make you a CAE modeler, right? Uh, what are the other skill sets that you need to have? So you need to have a very strong fundamental understanding of finite element analysis and strength of materials, right? So these two fundamental subjects and an understanding of meshing and connections and then vehicle integration. If you are a fresher, uh, to be very honest, vehicle integration is also not expected. Probably they will look at meshing and connections. These are two things that are absolutely required. Okay, now you know the skills, you know the role. What are the tools? Well, the tools that are present in the industry are ANSA and Hypermesh. ANSA and Hypermesh are pretty much widely used across the industry for a CAA model. So now, how to get into those uh, CAE modeler roles? Well, usually you need to have around one year experience in these tools and work on multiple projects. So what type of projects? Very good question. The projects that you need to work on is you need to take a complex plastic component. Think about your side door of your car, the inner panel of your side door of your car. So meshing that plastic component. Then you need to have experience in meshing a sheet metal component. So something like your uh, the Stephanie wheel of your car, uh, which basically gets mounted on a sheet metal, right? Uh, the rear trunk extra wheel holder, or a meshing of a full vehicle seat, right? So those are the type of projects that if you work on, 
your ability to get into an interview and do well in that interview and the tool test is absolutely high right so those are the kind of projects that you need to have and uh, one year of experience is usually that they uh, require so if you do not have work experience then you need to have engineering project experience so where you you basically work on these kind of projects right you get into a CAE modular role. If you have spent around one year right now, then you're going to the next step. So you want to kind of go up the ladder to the next role. What is the next role? There are two parts of the next role. First part of it is called a CAE analyst. The CAE analyst essentially uses the solver to solve the, comp the mesh components that you provide, right? So CAE analyst is the one who sets up the simulations. Then there is CAE analyst automation. So the automation aspect of it is basically people automate the machine process. I'm putting it very simply, so kind of take it with a bit of salt. CA analyst automation is where you automate the machine process. So what kind of skill sets uh, people expect? As a solver, there are different types of solver. A static solver, a dynamic solver. So a good example of static and dynamic solvers are your ANSYS workbench. Uh, explicit solvers, your crash analysis, LS Dyna and uh, radios, uh, are good explicit solvers. Then you have material modeling, uh, how to kind of uh, model the material in your solver, right? That is another skill set that you might need uh, if you are three plus years of experience and switching jobs. Then noise and vibration, durability. These are again, Nastran and Abacus are good examples. Then you need to, as a analyst, when you set up simulations and when you run it, there is going to be a lot of bugs you need to have the ability to debug those bugs. So you need to have that skill set. And for this particular role to be, you need to have automation, right? Or uh, you need to know either Python or uh, TCL TK for Hypermesh to kind of excel them. And, uh, and that's what I'm, I've kind of said here, static and dynamic ANSYS workbench, explicit LS Dyna and radios, or uh, NVH or NASTRAN, or uh, if you are looking at automation, TCL TK using uh, for Hypermesh and Python, right? Now, what kind of projects do you work on, right? That's really important. If you are going into these kind of roles, uh, the companies will look for, you need to have an understanding of frontal uh, crash analysis, side crash analysis of a car, uh, rollover of a car, then uh, head impact. Uh, so what happens when a head impacts on the car, right? Uh, something like explicit dynamics, so a bird striking an aircraft or propeller, you need to have experience with material modeling, understanding fatigue analysis, especially for non-linearity. So that, and uh, if you're going to the automation aspect of it, you need to have a experience in building macros. What I have done in this video is kind of give you an overview of how to move in your career as a CAE engineer. Right, you can start as a modeler. If you're a fresher, you can start as a modeler and you can basically spend two years as a modeler, understand the pre-processing aspect of it and also experience uh, the solvers while, while you're working on modeler and then progress to the next step of it, which is basically becoming a CAE analyst. And three to four years out there, you, you become an engineering manager for the CAE team. Right? So this video is to kind of give you an idea of how to become a CAE engineer. What are the pathways? I'm doing a part two of this video where I'm going to explain how you can become a CAE engineer in the next six months. Right? Stay tuned to that and uh, looking forward to kind of make more videos that can be helpful. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments. We will try to answer them as well. Thank you.